the, the theme of this, this conference is about Agile and Lean and open source software. Um, first, I'd like to talk a bit about Agile, the work on tenets of Agile development. And the first one is individuals and interactions over processes and tools. There's all kinds of Agile tools. There's things to measure, something called burn down, which is like how, how quickly your team is it's going through the cards, the, the, the things that they're supposed to be going through. Um, so instead of these, these tools and everything, it's more about just the, the idea, the, um, the individual, the interactions. The second tenet is working software over comprehensive documentation. Um, this is about when, when you have a software project and you say, this is what this thing is going to do. This is all of the parts of this software project. You have too many specs to describe exactly what you think this piece of software is going to be. That's when you get into a problem of um, you can't really change anything at any certain point. You, you get pigeonholed into your idea in the beginning, what you thought the app should be. And if you've ever built software before, you realize that it's it, it usually what ends up coming out in the end isn't what you started with. So it, it essentially also means just ship it. It's like Start out, um, document the things that are, that are necessary to get to the next sprint, and then ship that software and move on. The third is customer collaboration over contract negotiation. This is about um, talking, actually speaking, having your customer be in the development process. It's about having, spending time with them, asking them questions, having them, they call them the, it's like the project owner or one of these terms for who this person is. So the person who's kind of paying for the project, you want them to be in the say, um, the day-to-day -day kind of decision-making things. Um, and what this is really about, the whole point of it is to not build the wrong thing. And you might think, duh, of course we're not gonna build the wrong thing. Like, we, he told us what, she told us what she wanted. We, we know we're building. But if you've also ever worked on a software project, you often realize that in the end, the thing that you build is not at all what your client thought that they wanted. So keep them, keep them in the loop. The last uh, tenet is responding to change over following a plan. Software projects are chaotic, just like life. It's that ability to respond to change, to actually change your whole development process that makes it so you don't waste months and months building the wrong thing. I use something called the Pomodoro Technique. So I've had um, a, quite a bit of productivity problems in my past. Being a freelancer is kind of, it's harder than I thought it would be. You have to really manage yourself a lot more than you would think. Because normally you have a boss and you're like, oh, my boss is upset, so I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore. I need to come to work at 9 a.m. every day and leave at whatever time, and you have these rules. But when you're working at home, you're like on the couch, or you're like, oh, I'm, I'm looking, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm learning right now, instead of working. So, uh, I mean, it's good, always good to learn, but it's it's really hard to, to focus on actually doing work when you're learning. Um, so what the Pomodoro technique is, is it's these 30 minute time boxes that you give yourself, where you can only focus on one thing for 30 minutes. So you, you set a Pomodoro and you say, I am going to, um, what, like build the front end service for my widget. And you only focus on that time and that 30 minutes on what you're doing. Ruby and Agile, like why is Ruby a good fit for Agile software development? Test driven development is really good for things, even just testing after is really good for Agile development because if you have software tests, you can react to change easier. If you change different parts of your code and you run your tests, you know immediately if you broke something. And that's one of the hardest things about change in general in software development is, is breaking a dependency somewhere weird that you didn't expect. Um, another tool for kind of testing is, is a tool called Cucumber. It's more behavior driven and it's, um, you talk about like a whole story, a whole action that should happen. It's really, really good for communication because your, your clients can actually read your user stories and say, oh, exactly, that's what I meant. That's what I was, or that, what are you talking about? That's not actually at all what I was trying to do. Lean is a, a product development technique that um, it's very similar to Agile actually, but it's more for actually developing products. It's, it's based around hypotheses. So you, you have a product and you have these ideas about what your product, who it's for, what it should do, um, these types of things. 
you have these hypotheses, and then you're supposed to test these hypotheses. So it's all about experiments and um, trying to, knowing that you're, you're often, almost, not, not all the time, but you're really, really wrong a lot of the time. So when you go in assuming that, it's a lot easier to make some sort of product that actually is for the user. Maybe the user that you want isn't actually the user that your software is good for, and you find out it's for a different kind of user. Tenants of lean development, I'm going to go through those. The first one is, is measure everything. So as they say, um, if, if you didn't measure it, it didn't happen. And if one, one of the things that you need to do for lean development is set up things that actually measure all of your, your hypotheses. So you, you want to measure beforehand generally, say what is the status quo like, um, and then later be like always writing down what's happening, what the solutions to, to the problems are, how things are different, and then you can see actually what's changed when you've changed different kinds of factors in your, in your stuff. One trick that people use sometimes is you can, you can create a Google ad that is not too kind of a real product. So you create like five Google ads that all have different, different copy, different, different words in them, and then you check, you, you, you follow how many people click on whatever things. Maybe everyone clicks on only one and everyone skips all the other ones. And then you can, on your landing page later, um, use that kind of, that copy on your landing page because you know that that's something that people are actually super interested in. Also, when you're writing about your product, you can use those kinds of words and then hopefully Google will be like, oh, well, this is cool, I'm going to index this for this word. But um, that's one way. So measure these kinds of, of experiments that you're doing and then um, act upon them. So another huge thing that they, they like to say a lot is get out of the building. So you actually want to get out and talk to customers, talk to possible people that will be using your thing. Like, not just assume that you know what everyone wants, not assume you know what everyone's doing. Like, go out and talk to people, ask them questions, kind of even be like, would you pay for this? Maybe even make them give you money or promise so you know that, oh, that guy actually gave me money for this thing? That means it's something that is worth actually building. Um, another thing is to, like, you want to, like, you want to observe what everyone's doing. Um, what they're, how they're reacting to your things. You want to ask everyone questions. Um, another tenet is everything is an experiment. So you want to be creating lots of experiments, lots of little experiments to test what you think your users will do. Like, a way to start an experiment is, I believe target market will do this action or use this solution for this reason. This is kind of a basis hypothesis or um, experiment to, to do. So one example is like, I believe hipsters will buy mustache hats because they love mustaches and ironic hats. So then I would go out and I would find hipsters and say, like maybe, would you buy this mustache hat? Do you like, do you really love mustaches as much as I think you do? And um, especially maybe people with mustaches. Um, so the, the third thing, or the fourth thing, the most kind of one of the most important things, this again has to do with change, is when you find out that you were wrong, or if you find out that this other product is actually for the user base and they actually want it, then pivot. And that means just change your whole kind of business direction to be about this new thing that you found out. So there's different cycles of kind of pivoting where you, you work on stuff, you test your experiments, and then if you find out, if you get some kind of results that are telling you to do this, you can pivot your whole idea, you, you pivot again, you pivot again, but eventually you stop pivoting and you focus on whatever group you, you got to at that point. Um, if, you've, if you've never been to a startup weekend, I don't know, if, is there a startup weekend in Nairobi? Yes? Yes? Um, I really highly recommend it. Like it's a, it's, it can be an incredibly frustrating, but very, very rewarding experience. Like, you, people come up and they pitch an idea and then groups form around this pitch idea and then you build some kind of piece of software or technology or whatever the startup weekend is about over the weekend all together. And it's, it, like, it's all about getting out of the building. You want like, people to go out and talk to people. You want to test your hypotheses. You're, you're building something. You're having to deal with like, this, this team of people that you don't know that like, have very different ideas than you a lot of the time. And it's, it's, it can be really, really, really frustrating. But, and you're also like up a lot. So um, 
usually day two or kind of into day two, it gets, it can be a little a little rough with no sleep and uh, personal conflict. But it's it's a good time and like you learn a ton in a very very short amount of time. And a lot of people say that like the the weekend that they spent doing the startup weekend or the hackathon or whatever is like the most productive they they've been in years in just like a weekend. So like really really do it. Um, so I've been using kind of lean methodologies for for diets, for like the kind of the, the food that I put in my body. Um, there's this pretty awesome book called The Healthy Programmer, which um, is about kind of like hacking your hacking your life, hacking your fitness. Um, I highly recommend it. And um, so one of the things that I've taken from this book, I, I, I realized that there's certain types of weight, there's there's ways to eat that I really that don't work for me. And um, one of the biggest problems with changing the way that you eat is if you change it kind of too much and you don't like it, then you just stop it. And then you end up eating like worse generally than you were eating before. So one of the things that they talk about is like going in and saying, okay, I'm gonna do like a week sprint with this, this new weight that I'm eating and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna review it and say, maybe I don't like that you can't eat wheat but I do like that I'm eating a lot of fruit. So can I find something that, that more diet that combines these types of things? And for me, it's been working out really well. Like I'm, I'm, I'm happy about kind of like the way that I'm eating right now. Like, and it's really important to me too because I went from a job where I was standing all the time to a job where I'm sitting hunched over at a desk. And like, I, you get like it's it's really hard to force yourself to get physical and do things. Like if anyone's getting new, if anyone's new to using the computer all the time, um, yeah, <laughs> it's good luck. Um, so how Ruby works with Lean, Ruby is really, really great for prototyping. Like that's what, that's mostly actually what you'll hear from like, from C developers and things like that. They'll be, you'll be like, I'm a Ruby developer. Like, yeah, Ruby's a, it's good language for prototyping. Yeah. But that's it. And, um, it is, it's true. Like you can build, that's one thing, that's one reason why Rails got so popular so fast. Like you have an application running on a server in minutes and you can build a blog, you can build a to-do list, you can build whatever, like really, really quickly. Um, and if you have a more complicated application, it's, it's faster generally, in my experience, to build it up with Ruby than it is with something else. Then when you want to port it to something else, it gets kind of different, but, um, it's really, really good for prototyping. So if you are actually knowing that maybe your whole your application is going to be maybe thrown in the garbage because